What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Brandon Blakeney, a.k.a. Brandon Lee TV. Welcome back to the Live with Brandon Blakeney podcast. Now, kick back, relax, and come take a ride with your boy. Now, it was Championship Sunday all across the country for conference championships in women's college basketball, and we had some explosive matchups literally a scuffle breaks out in a rematch between LSU and South Carolina in the SEC tournament title game with everything on the line emotions were high oh my goodness oh man we got to get into it but before we do make sure y'all hit that subscribe button for all the latest and the greatest Join our memberships we got that exclusive content coming daily weekly whenever you need it now let's get into it You are now locked into the Live with Brandon Blakeney podcast. Here is your host, Brandon Blakeney. Y'all, physical was not the word for this free match between LSU and South Carolina, man. Um, it was already heavy emotions coming into it with Last Terrapoa getting a concussion last night on a terrible fall, having to be escorted off the court on a stretcher. So obviously she was out of this game. And LSU came in with heavy hearts and wanted to play for Poa. And, I mean, they left it all on the court. I got to give it to them. South Carolina completes the gauntlet as far as regular season and conference play, running through getting the SEC regular season title, and then finishing it off with an SEC tournament title. Whoo! It was emotional. There was scratching. There was clawing. There was hair pulling. There were mad elbows being thrown. And we even saw Flaje Johnson's brother get arrested and escorted out of the arena after he jumped from the crowd onto the court over the scorer's table. It's ugly. It's not good. Um, no one wants to be a part of that. No one wants to see, to, to see that ugliness. But I can tell you this, I wish she would have pushed Angel Reese. Don't push a kid, that, you 6'8", don't push somebody that little. That, that was uncalled for in my opinion. Let those two girls that were jawing, let them go at it. We're not scared of South Carolina, and I'm gonna repeat that, we're not scared of South Carolina. And a lot of people are scared of them, and we came in and battled and battled and battled and battled and battled to the end. And of course, we came up short, but we'll see, we'll see them again, or whoever will see them again. But I'm just happy, and I'm, I'm gonna acknowledge my teammates first, because Janae, Aaliyah, they came off the bench and did big things for us. Michaela, she was frustrated because she had to do minimum numbers and minimum time, but she came out there and did what she did, and she defended and she played as hard as she could. So being able to be proud of this team, I'm not gonna give them all the credit because I know how hard we played. We played hard, we played tough, we did whatever it took to win, and sadly we came up short, but I'm happy where we are right now, and anybody seeing us moving forward should be scared. But I, I'm gonna say this, uh, Fly J came to me after the game, right after the game, and she just apologized and said she's not that type of player. And I really appreciate that. There's something that somebody won't ever hear if I didn't say anything, and she's not. She's a really good person. Um, things just got escalated. Um, I'll take responsibility for what happened from our side of it, um, which is we don't, you know, we. We, we talk about these things as a, you know, as a, as a team, and we, we try to, as much as possible, um, express to them how not to react in, in those type of situations. Um, but real time is real time. And I know that, you know, anybody, Camilla, as well as the other four or five players that were ejected, I know if they had a chance to do it all over again, they would do it differently. But now we have that. I just don't want... Um, the people who are tuning in to women's basketball see that and think, you know, that is our game because it isn't. Our game is a really beautiful thing. Um, and to be quite honest, this is this is a part of it now. So we have to fix it and we have to move on. Woo! LSU obviously a lot more fired up um, hearing from them compared to the message from Don Staley. And rightfully so, man. Um, hey, Oh, I ain't gonna lie. Uh, Flage, man, she got bullied out there by 6'7 Camilla Cardoso. Man, that wasn't right. 
And I get like, you know, coming to eight to the eight of your teammates, but that was just so uncalled for. I mean, every, the, the, the situation was pretty much over and then it was extremely escalated by South Carolina, man. Um, and obviously, you know, Angel Reese is letting the world know LSU is not scared of them. Um, Coach Kim Mulkey, obviously, just a, a bad taste in her mouth about the whole situation. And she, how about them fighting words? And she wished she would have pushed Angel. Ooh-wee. Something I do want to point out, though, is um, during Angel's rant, Part of it was like she was talking about, you know, we'll see them again or whoever will see them again. Did she just give us the insight on her decision next year? I'm just saying that was just a little bit of an interesting tidbit that I picked out. Because, you know, it seemed like, you know, if they don't see them in the NCAA tournament again or this year, you know, if they don't see them again in the NCAA tournament, uh, next year might not be an option for her. I don't know, just something to look at, but we'll, we'll, we'll come back to that <laughs> definitely down the line. But uh, obviously, Angel is fired up, and this might be the rallying cry they need. I mean, it's got to feel like LSU versus the world right now. Last Terrapoa goes down. Um, you know what I'm saying? You suffer some key injuries at the beginning of the year. Angel Reese has gone through her situation. Um, you know, she missed some games. Uh, you got Anissa Morrow out there battling with a black eye. I mean, definitely two different perspectives. And then you look on the other side with Angel Re or with Don Staley, I should say, and how she handled things. Don much calmer with a, a message more so of peace and unity within the women's game. And you know, we don't expect anything less from her. Um, obviously, it's big for, of her to just protect Flage the way she did and speak on her character and, you know, her as a ball player and as a person. I'm glad that they got to have that moment. And, you know, she stood up and took sole responsibility for the way, you know, that her team and her side handled that situation as well. I mean, it was complete madness out there, and it delayed the game a while, but... It is just another tidbit to fuel this rivalry going forward, man, because it was crazy, and it started, you know, um, LSU was going on a run, then South Carolina went on a run, Malaysia for Wiley picks Flash Johnson's pocket, they get tangled up a little bit, uh, timeout is called, they're going to their benches, of course, players crossing paths, Flash Johnson gives Ashley Watkins a shove, she don't even care, she's so hyped, but Camilla Cardoso, the enforcer, we've seen it before, runs in and lays Flash Johnson out, and at six foot seven, hey man, you do not want those problems, Johnson's brother jumps over the stands, the police jump over the stands, he's taken up for his sister, the bench is clear, Multiple players are suspended. LSU will only have five players in their first round NCAA tournament matchup. On the other side, South Carolina, it will be without Camila Cardoso. Could be without Tahina Pow Pow as well. Um, it, it was crazy. They had to finish this game 5-on-5 five five with like a little over two minutes left in this contest. And it just shows you, man, uh, there is no love lost. I mean, you got fans jumping over the court. It was crazy. I know y'all saw. Like, y'all got to let me know how y'all feel about that situation because that was nuts. I mean, that's something that you definitely were not applauding. And you don't want to see that in, you know, in the game, like, that's something that we want to try to avoid. We want to keep it clean, competitive, and just playing hard. And it got very scrappy. And the players were jawing at each other all game. Like, it's no secret what this game means to both these programs. Um, and the last game was a dogfight. But South Carolina pulls out the dub. They keep their emotions in check. They're composed. They showed incredible poise, and of course, Don Staley is always keeping it classy, apologizing to the basketball world, as well as taking Flaugé Johnson to the side and talking to her as well. Um, but man, what a game. I don't want the brawl to take away from how great of a game that was, and I don't even want to call it a brawl, man, honestly. It was a skirmish, you know, a tussle, um, a scuffle, if you, if you will. 
Um, and I don't want that to take away from the whole game, but we had to talk about it because it was crazy, and it just added more fuel to the fire because these two are going to be competing in the SEC for years to come, the way these rosters are shaping up and the way these two coaches, Kim Mulkey and Don Staley, are recruiting at the high school level and in the transfer portal. Um, but like we said, South Carolina picks up a big dub and moves on. To the, I mean, they were already the number one overall seed for the NCAA tournament, but adding some more hardware is never a bad thing. Let's get into the schematics of this whole thing. So South Carolina took the dub 79-72, to and this was really a game of runs, man. I mean, honestly, it was South Carolina going on 12-0 run, LSU answering with a 9-0 run. Um, both these teams, I, I think, really, really grew from this contest. South Carolina shot better from the field at 43.1% to LSU's 37.3%. LSU, though, especially Haley Van Lift, was knocking down the tray balls. They shoot 42.9 from three compared to South Carolina's 35%. What I was impressed with, though, is South Carolina winning the free throw battle, 84.2% to 80%, only leaving three points at the line. LSU came in, though. One thing that I said would separate this game was the rebounding battle, and LSU dominated that. But on top of getting those rebounds, there were some turnovers where South Carolina was poking that ball away or stealing it, and it got them some extra possessions. Um, but looking at the rebounding battle, that was crucial. South Carolina wins the assist battle. They also have 10 blocks, only 13 turnovers, and they forced 15 turnovers on LSU, which ended up hurting the Tigers and allowed that transition offense from South Carolina to run wild. Leading South Carolina, we got to say the two LSU Slayers, first off, Malaysia Fool Wiley is the kryptonite for LSU. They never have an answer for her. 24 points for the freshman off the bench. She had 10 points in the third quarter alone that really helped push South Carolina ahead. And they really, I mean, they never lost a lead in this contest. But Fool Wiley was sensational, hitting back-to-back -back threes, getting to the cup, providing that ultimate spark for this group, man. Like, she was just incredible in this contest. And she continues to be incredible on the biggest of stages and the biggest moments when this team needs her. Tahina Pow Pow, man, had not been really having too good of a shooting effort through the SEC tournament, not really finding her scoring stroke. But today, she bounced back 12 points, 5 assists, 2 rebounds for her. Um, and then Raven Johnson, I, I love seeing her leadership out there, trying to corral her teammates. She was trying to hold Flage back to stop the whole scuffle from getting out of control. She really kept her composure, and you can tell she's a true leader of this squad, man. Nine points, five assists, five rebounds for her, just doing everything that they need her to do. She was guarding Haley Van Lith pretty tight throughout this contest when it wasn't Malaysia Full Wiley. Uh, Bree Hall Breezy came up big with two clutch buckets late in the fourth quarter, and she was the one that really put the dagger in LSU once again for this group. Uh, Camila Cardoso, emotional buzzer beater three-pointer, and you wonder if that would affect this team or her play. She had eight points and six rebounds, a handful of blocks, though. She made things extremely difficult in that paint for Angel Reese today, and she did exactly what they needed her to do. Chloe Kitts, six points, four rebounds. Y'all know she out there scrapping, fighting in the paint, and she had the task of checking Anissa Moro. Sanaya Fagan had to finish this game after Camila Cardoso was ejected, and she got some valuable minutes as well. Four points, four rebounds for her, and uh, she came up with some big plays late, grabbed some big rebounds, and really helped seal the deal. Tessa Johnson added four points as well. So another well-rounded effort from South Carolina, man, where they, you know, they went 10 deep in this game and really threw a lot of different looks and utilized their depth to wear LSU down. On the other side, LSU starters, man, I think all of them played over 34 minutes in this contest. Uh, Haley Van Lith, I think she was incredible in this contest. 14 points, 3 assists, 6 rebounds. They could have used a couple more of her threes to fall late. But other than that, man, I mean, she was being hounded all night, all 
game by Full Wiley as well as Johnson, and she took care of the basketball for the most part, made some big shots, controlled the tempo for LSU, really kept composure. Um, you know, we, they were without a big piece in Last Terrapoa as well as Michaela Williams, obviously not 100% out there. So a lot of the ball hand, pretty much all of the ball handling duty other than going to Flage Johnson went through Haley Van Lith. She was the main initiator and really was locked in at that point guard position. Um, I think she did a really good job guarding Raven Johnson as well. So, hey, Haley Van Lith, man, we got to give her a gold star for this game. Anissa Morrow, black eye and all, was out there fighting for her life in that paint. She grabs 10 rebounds, also adds 19 points. Another big game for her against South Carolina. Flashe kind of got going late in this contest, man. Um, there was a couple different looks that, that were given to her. Um, I think, honestly, Full Wiley had her for a little bit. Uh, Breezy Hall did an incredible job just scouring and following Flage everywhere she went on the court. And Flashe has been LSU's best player through this SEC tournament. And, uh, you know, it was emotional. It was an emotional game for her. Um, we saw, we mentioned, you know, her brother being arrested and escorted. Um, and we'll have more updates on that. But Big Four, you know, she left it all on the court. Angel Reese, it was up and down. 15 points, 13 rebounds for her. Uh, she battled through some foul trouble. And, um, she, hey, man, she had her hands full with Camila Cardoso. They were locking down that paint. Um, you know, she even shot a three in this game at a big juncture in the contest where I felt like if she could have made that three from the top of the key, man, that would have probably, possibly could have changed the whole trajectory of this game for them. Uh, Janae Kent, how about her, the freshman, getting some big minutes, three points. She had a big three ball, made herself, you know, somewhat impactful in this contest. Um, she was out there scrapping, man. Michaela Williams gave it a go, two points two assists, four rebounds, but she had a really nice, like, full-court pass to Angel Reese, but more so than not, I mean, she was pretty ineffective in this game, we gotta be honest, uh, Leah Del Rosario came in, like a big Mack truck making big plays, she had a big and one, six points, three rebounds for her, uh, but it was not enough, South Carolina gets another dub, and just etches another banner, and another trophy in that huge trophy case that's getting filled up pretty fast for them man um just it was a that was a game um it, it, if you watched it you were on the edge of your seats um you know what i want to know what was you guys biggest take biggest takeaways from this game you know what did you think south carolina did well what did you think lsu did well i think south carolina took a bunch of tough shots i think you know they were up by double digits i think lsu showed a lot of fight but also you know the depth was an issue I mean, you know, you had South Carolina whose bench outscored LSU's by like over 20 points. That was a major factor in this contest. 10 versus 7, 10, I mean, that's tough. That's a tough matchup. LSU will have to get healthy. They will only have five players in their first-round matchup in the NCAA tournament. Um, they have arguably locked up a national two seed. Um, so, you know... They should be fine. Their first-round matchup shouldn't be too crazy, but only relying on five. Luckily for them, though, they've done that majority of the season. They could have six if Last Terrapoa is available to come back. Of course, we will be monitoring that situation and wishing her a speedy recovery.